The Lord had to teach me that many times what seems to me like interruptions are actually God's opportunities for ministry. Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. I want everything God has for me. You probably do too. Like me, you probably want all that God has for you, and you want it right now. But here's one that won't happen that way. It's the fruit of the Spirit that we're talking about today. See, we've been talking about the fruits of the Spirit and working our way through the different fruits of the Holy Spirit. You know, these are traits that the Holy Spirit will work into our lives as we let Him live in us and have the freedom to express Himself through us. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are found in the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 22, where it says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no law. And we've already talked about love and joy and peace, and we've been talking about those, and you'll probably want to go back and watch those videos if you haven't already seen them. But today we're going to look at the fruit of the Spirit that everybody needs more of, but most of us don't want it. Proverbs 16 verse 32 says, it's better for a person to be a patient person than a warrior. And the person with self-control is more powerful than the one who takes over a whole city. It's better to win control over yourself than to rule over an entire city. And patience is kind of weird, really. You know, it's easy to come across as patient when everything's going our way at our pace, our speed, and when we're not in a hurry. But when things aren't going our way and we, when we have other things to do and things we want to do and things other people want us to do and someone or something is slowing us down, that's when we really need to draw on our patience. And one thing that tests our patience is interruptions. You know, you're trying to do one thing and other things keep intruding into your, your consciousness and your life, you know, like you're trying to rest, catch a quick nap and, you know, you, put, you forgot to put your phone on, do not disturb. And then every few minutes, somebody's texting you. And just as you start to drift off, somebody calls you that you really don't want to miss their call. So you take the call, you know, maybe a person in need or someone who needs an answer or a prayer or some help. That happened to me last week. I had an hour and a half window where I was so excited that I'd be able to catch up on some much needed sleep. And I was actually excited about being able to catch a nap for an hour and a half. And just as I started to doze off, the phone rang and I have my phone settings so that it announces who's calling. And I knew that the person who was calling never calls just a chit chat. So I took the call, just a 10 minute or so call, not a bad call at all. But then about five minutes later, someone had sent out a group text, my favorite, and it seemed like about every three or four minutes, somebody gave their response and that was going off until my next phone call. And that all repeated for my whole hour and a half. I mean, that's a small, but to me at that time, very real test of patience. You know, may, well, maybe not a test, maybe just a quiz. But another time is when I'm trying to have my Bible study and prayer and meditation time. And that's when it just seems to attract people and phone calls and drop-ins like ants on a piece of candy. You know, I think about Jesus and his disciples. His disciples were just as human as you and I are. And they had too much to do at many times and too many people making demands and following them around. Plus, they were trying to protect Jesus from the endless stream of people making demands and wanting things and favors from him and all that. And they really tried to run some interference at times when it got particularly overwhelming, and they really meant well. But I was reading in Matthew 9, verses 13 and 14, where it says that people were bringing children to Jesus to have him lay his hands on them and to bless them. You know, the disciples really thought, you know, this is kind of a trivial use of Jesus's limited time here on earth. And they just say, hey, look to the parents, you all got to cut it out, man. You know, give Jesus a break. Get the kids to leave Jesus alone. Then it says there in verse 14 that Jesus said, let the children alone. Don't hinder them from coming to me because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. So the disciples were only seeing the interruption while Jesus looked at it as an opportunity. The Lord had to teach me that many times what seems to me like interruptions are actually God's opportunities for ministry. 
A lot of times those interruptions are doors that God is wanting to open in our lives, relationships that he's bringing to us, maybe a ministry opportunity that he's sending our way. And we can forget that God has a plan for your life and that the Holy Spirit is always at work behind the scenes. And the interruption that we're experiencing might just be What happens when he's bringing his work to the surface in our life and he wants us to have a part in what he's doing? You know, this is part of God's way of working in your life to grow you and to bless you, to bring good into your life. But a lot of times they just feel like interruptions. Believe me, I know. And they can really test our patience. Another thing that tests our patience or at least reveals what level of patience we're operating at or we're developing That's the inconveniences that come our way. Things that make what we're trying to do harder than it needs to be. You know, maybe something we need and we can't find it anywhere. That gets me a lot, you know, and we waste so much time searching for it. We know we have it, but we're not able to find it. You know, I know that really gets to me sometimes. I've got a pretty well-equipped garage and I let friends use it from time to time, you know, to work on their cars or motorcycles. And then when they've left, I'll be trying to work on my stuff and looking for a tool that I need. I know they didn't steal it, but I can't figure out for the life of me, where did they put my tools? And when I call them, a lot of times they have no idea either. You know, they're like, well, I don't know, I left it somewhere there. And sometimes it might just be something like, something online where your password doesn't work or you need tech support and you're on hold for an hour or more. And when the person finally picks up, the line is disconnected. You've probably been through that one. I mean, it really can test your patience and then you're starting all over again. Or when there's so much to do and the other people around you seem oblivious to it. You're trying to work and get things done and it's too much All the while, they're sitting there talking or playing on their phone, laughing and not helping one bit. I mean, this even happened in Bible times. In Luke 10, verse 40, it tells us about a woman in this situation. Jesus goes to the house of Mary and her sister Martha. That was Lazarus's sisters. And of course, Jesus' entourage is with them. So it's a lot of people visiting. So Martha's busy getting food and snacks ready for everybody. And, you know, this is back in the days with no microwaves, no ovens, no refrigerators, no pre-prepared food or snacks. Everything's done from raw ingredients over a wood fire. But Mary wasn't helping her one bit. And here's what happens. It says that Martha has her hands full of the work of the house. And she comes to Jesus and she says, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has let me do all the work? Tell her she needs to give me some help. You know, Martha's upset with her sister because Mary's doing nothing to help out and leaving Martha to do all the food prep and to do all the serving while Mary's sitting there with Jesus and the guys, you know, listening to Jesus and enjoying some, you know, anointed testimony or whatever. You know, Martha would have liked to have done that too. And you've probably been put in that position more than once or twice. And it's tempting to get mad and impatient or sarcastic, you know, but we need to realize that the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. He's perfecting us. He's conforming us to the image of Jesus, and he's preparing us for something the Lord has prepared for us. Another thing that reveals our patience level is how we deal with the irritations that come our way, how we handle irritations That really reveals a lot about how we're growing in the Lord or how we're not growing in the Lord. You know, some things just get on your last nerve. We used to have a neighbor who would let his dog out to do his business at about 5.30 a.m. every morning. You know, the dog didn't want to be outside. And they'd let the dog out, and the dog would stand there at the back door of their house, barking and barking and barking and barking to be let back in. But our neighbor wanted the dog to be outside at least a half hour or more. So that's how we woke up every morning. And my son called the neighbor one time to complain about the barking. And the neighbor said, well, barking? Hey, that's what dogs do. Get used to it. And he never changed his behavior until they got rid of the dog for some other reason and got a small dog that didn't wake us up every morning. That would really start our day off to a rough start. And there's so many things that can get on our last nerve. Sometimes it's a person who talks on and on and on, maybe loudly and in run-on sentences. 
about a little bit of nothing, and you're trying to keep your peace and your spirit, and maybe you're trying to have an inner conversation with the Lord you're trying to keep going, and maybe on top of that, you're trying to meditate on the Word a bit, and while they're talking and talking and talking, with all that going on, then maybe you have to use the bathroom. I mean, the Holy Spirit uses these things to develop His fruit of patience in our lives. He knows the value of patience and what it will bring to you in life, and He's at work building patience in you as fast as possible. I remember how Moses in the book of Numbers got irritated with the Israelites on one occasion. Lots of occasions, but this time he'd put up with their petty complaints and criticizing and all for years, and he's just out of patience with them. He's had it. And God tells Moses to speak to this large rock that came across in the desert, and that if he would speak to it, water would come out when he did it. But in Numbers chapter 20, verses 10 and 11, it says that Moses and Aaron gathered the group of people, the assembly, gathered them before the rock. And Moses said, listen, you rebels, should we bring forth water for you out of this rock? And then Moses lifted up his hand and he struck the rock. He hit it twice with his walking stick, with his rod, and water came forth out of the rock and all the people and their animals drank from it. He smote the rock when he should have spoke the word. Because God had told Moses to speak to the rock, but instead Moses smacked the rock. And because of that, God didn't let him enter into the promised land. And Moses was usually a patient person. But you know, even patient people have their limits. So we need to let the Holy Spirit work in our hearts to develop patience in us. And a lot of times it seems like our greatest irritations come from people. My dad used to say that I needed to learn a lesson from the oyster. The oyster takes an irritation, a grain of sand, and turns it into a pearl. And if we learn to respond to irritations in positive ways, I believe they can be used by the Lord to transform those irritations into pearls. Here's a tough one for me. Really test my patience. It's when there's nothing I can do. You know, maybe a lot of things need doing, but right now I can't do them. There's something missing, information missing, parts missing, or whatever. Inactivity can be a patience tester. You know, and sometimes God's assignment to you is to literally do nothing but wait and prepare. And we can hate that. You know, most, most of us would rather do anything rather than wait. You know, we hate to wait in a doctor's office, hate to wait in a line of traffic, hate to wait in a line at a store, or be confined to bed rest when we really need to just lay there and get well and regain our strength. So what are some paths to becoming a more patient person? First of all, begin to see things, filter them with your spiritual eyes instead of your natural eyes, to recognize that God is working in your life. And that each thing, each person, each situation that tests our patience is being used by the Holy Spirit to work in us, to grow us, to make more room for God to develop our life and character so we can be more fruitful. And when you look at things that way, it gives you a better way of dealing with the situation or the person that's getting on your nerves. Patience begins by changing the way you interpret the situation. When I'm impatient, it's showing that I'm not looking at things through the eyes of the Lord. It shows that all I'm focused on is what I want to get done, my needs, my goals, my wants, my schedule, and how people are messing up my life. So I need to learn to see things from God's point of view. Second, realize that sometimes God will put irritating people around you to smooth you out a bit. Some people, I believe, have the gift of being God's sandpaper. You know, patience is a mark of spiritual maturity, and most children are very impatient. But maturity involves the ability to wait. A person of understanding and wisdom can be patient. When I'm walking in the Spirit, I'm more patient and more loving. And 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 says that love is patient. If I'm walking in love, I'm walking in the Spirit, and I will be patient whether I like it or not. Third, trusting God more, operating in faith, will cause me to develop and show patience in my day-to-day life. You know, patience isn't a personality trait. It's the fruit of the Spirit. You can't just psych yourself up and say, well, I'm going to be patient today if it kills me. You'll start off the day being stressed out, and before long, you'll start being impatient with everybody and everything. The patience that's the fruit of the Spirit in your life isn't just being quiet when you feel like screaming and hollering. When it's the fruit of the Spirit, you'll have a genuine inner peace and a calm. Certain situations won't bother you the way they used to. And why is that? Because you're drawing on the strength and the power of the Lord. Our level of patience reveals a lot about our level of spiritual maturity. 
using your faith helps you to say, God, what do you want me to learn in this situation? God, how can I be more like Jesus here? You know, the Bible is a book about patience, waiting for the Messiah, waiting to get into the promised land, you know, waiting for these various things. You know, waiting demonstrates faith and it pleases God. And the hardest part of waiting is when you're in a hurry and God isn't. I can tell you that God is never late. He's an on-time God, like they say. He may not move according to my schedule or your schedule, but he's always on time. He wants us to trust him and wait on him. David said in Psalm 37, verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Rest and wait. Earlier in that Psalm, Psalm 37, verses 3, 4, and 5, he says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will do it. Trust in him. He will do it. God wants so badly for us to trust him and follow his leading and guiding. Patience is a major indicator of our faith in him. God wants us to be patient. And the Bible says that God himself is patient. It says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some people count slowness, but he's patient toward you, not wishing for anyone to perish, but for everyone to come to repentance. So I hope this little message brought you some strength, some edification, some understanding, and will help you to let the Holy Spirit bring forth his fruit of patience in your life. Please be sure to give us a thumbs up to subscribe if you haven't already and be a part of our Worship Center family online. And also, don't forget to share this with your friends. You know, it might be used by the Lord in their lives more than you could ever know. And they'll probably appreciate it and appreciate you forever. And last, don't forget to pray for me. I always need it and value it. And we pray for you. God bless you. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org. Or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family.